Hi, my name's Rob Scott from UC Today and welcome to another monthly Microsoft Teams news update. As always, I'm joined by Tom Abuthnot, UC Solutions Architect, Microsoft Certified Master and MVP. Welcome, Tom. Hey, Rob. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Very good. Uh, in fact, it was uh, Father's Day, was it, a week ago or so, and uh, I've, I've still got... Um, I've, a quite a, a quantity of beers left. I was going to show you actually because I was, it was the best Father's Day present I've ever had, which was a complete crate of super dad beers. Oh, that's and, awesome. That's yeah, so cool. Was, I'm still working my way through it, unfortunately. Though, but uh, yeah, I'm good. Got, How I are got, you? I got I got the classic pajamas for my uh, Father's Day. Did you? Oh, you yeah. need to you need to train those kids. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I'm all right. Yeah. Otherwise, how's things with you? Yeah, good. Yeah, keeping busy. It's all go. Just uh, continues to be a lot of Teams telephony projects. That's the conversation everybody's having at the moment. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't really touched the ground, to be honest. Yeah, it's super busy out there, isn't it? And uh, Microsoft Teams seems to be at the, the centre of every conversation at the moment. So, really good to see. So, hey, Tom, we've got uh, uh, some good news updates. You know, some, some big things have happened this uh, this week and uh, over the past kind of few weeks. So, why don't we kick off? Tom, what is number one on your list this week? Yeah, so number one has to be Windows 11. So at, at time of recording, this just came out yesterday. Um, Microsoft kind of pre-announced it. It's not due until later in the year. Um, but most interesting for, for us in UC terms is they're baking teams directly kind of into the OS, um, very tight integration around the taskbar having teams controls and you can start chat straight from the taskbar. Um, so even though it was a Windows event, they spent a good five minutes of the keynote talking about how great teams is and how integrated it is, which is really interesting. Yeah, I did see that and it's gone, you know, huge as not it across the news uh, wires um especially uh i was reading uh, one report that um, made a point about slack actually and uh, the the valuation of slack and, and and whether it's actually you know potentially worth the 27 billion that uh, salesforce are paying for it as a result of microsoft further baking in teams into their uh, their core proposition so the whole yeah. operating system uh, and, and, my, and honestly my initial reaction was like oh is this the whole browsers in the os netscape problem again but then some i was talking to somebody about it they were like well you know uh, chromebooks bake in the google proposition ios bakes in the apple proposition android bakes in the google proposition yeah. so if you can't bake your own apps in then they have to talk about ios and android and apple and google yeah. as well so it's, it seems like a new day in that respect yeah you're right maybe we're moving beyond that that that, that discussion and uh, and burying that uh Burying the hatchet between Slack and Microsoft Teams potentially, but uh, I'm, I'm sure competitors will have something to say about it, though. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet, and it's not the business edition that's being baked in, is it, to the operating system? Yeah, no, that's a really important point. It is the consumer edition, and actually, those who watch the keynote, or if you watch it back, um, you'll see it was a slightly different Teams experience, and that kind of brings us on to our our second topic, which is. This experience you saw in the keynote is actually what Microsoft are kind of internally calling Teams 2.0. And it's a new client built on a technology called Edge WebView rather than Electron. And it all gets a bit techy, um, but the punchline is they're using their own engine to render um, rather than using an open source product called Electron, which means it can be faster, use less memory. That they're, they're touting half the memory usage compared to Teams, you know, the current wow. Teams, Teams 1.0. Um, so, so if the new the keynote for Windows 11 looked like kind of flash, that's because it's the the newer version of Teams. They're starting with that in consumer and Windows 11, and then that will move to the enterprise model as well. Interesting. It's like Microsoft Teams just gone full electric, isn't it? <laughs> like <Yeah>. cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. I mean, and it's been something that's been touted and demanded for a while. Electron was really popular back in the day as kind of a way to build a desktop apps with web technologies but we're three years plus down the line now and there are better options and the, the key thing here is this is because edge use chromium which means they have their own chrome based rendering engine so now microsoft can directly control more of the proposition which is just really good for them they can optimize in their direction that's great and ultimately better for user experience better for us all involved so fantastic um Number three, we said we'd talk about Microsoft Teams Rooms on Surface Hub. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah. So this is, a, 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 again, Microsoft and Microsoft. It's interesting. So Surface Hubs, both the Gen 1s and the Gen 2, the 2Ss, are getting an updated Teams app. Uh, and it's really a lot of catch up on what you get in Microsoft Teams rooms. So for the uninitiated, Microsoft have Microsoft Teams rooms, which are built by the, or the code is built by the Teams team, and they ship them out on Lenovo, Crestron, HP, um, a, a whole bunch of vendors, Yealink, and that's run by Teams. And then you have the Surface team who build the Surface devices, the great big touch interaction kind of collaboration boards. And you just ship a Teams app to that. Um, so now there's an improved Teams app as part of the, the the Surface. And it's only in preview at the moment. But it adds things like um, now when you hit join, it just automatically pops into the full screen. It has together mode. It has the large gallery view, shared applications, system audio, and a whole bunch of other little features. Everything you kind of expect in Teams desktop, um, bringing that experience to the Surface Hub now. Nice on the big screen as well i like that i can i, I can only imagine together mode on the big screen i bet, I bet that's it, pretty cool yeah it's pretty interesting and, and the large gallery view so you, um i haven't put it in the roundup actually but they're moving to a a page model so you can have 50 people on the screen you can click another page have another 50 people so when you start to get into those big surface screens you can actually have a large gallery view of 49 people and see what's going on you can't really do that on a small monitor but on a big room that's really interesting it is indeed. It is indeed. Okay, so next up, we said we'd talk about something quite neat. <laughs> you had to do it. Mark Vale has Sorry, been doing that joke to, to me every day since I posted the blog. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Go on. Uh, yeah, so so Neat uh, are uh, the latest rooms uh, certified vendor. So we talked about Microsoft Teams rooms. They're built by different vendors. Neat is a new vendor. What's super notable here is Neat launched specifically for and with zoom um so they launched at um eric's zoomtopia keynote in 2019 uh zoom have directly backed them in terms of finance or i think eric has i don't know if it's zoom money or eric's money um but but they were zoom exclusive they were direct to consumer they didn't have a distribution model um and, and it now they've brought Teams rooms onto everything you've seen from Neat around the Zoom space, their collaboration board, their bars, video bars, their personal devices, and their, um, I don't know what they call it. They call it kind of a, a Neat pad, uh, which is like a room scheduling device. All of that will be team supported uh, around Q4. Yeah, and I know the guys at Neat, and, and they, they are a really cool bunch, and the products are, are, are really been very successful on Zoom so far. Um, so, I mean, I just think it just makes sense for a company like that, not just just to have everything, all their eggs in one basket. But uh, Yeah, 100% makes sense for them. Like, I mean, why would you not address a large part of the market? We can argue over what the percentages are, but clearly Teams is a big thing right now. Um, you're missing an opportunity. And their hardware looks really nice. I was surprised hmm. how big the reaction was on social and, and the blog like loads of people like when can i get this how do i get these devices because the devices just look really slick um but obviously up to now they've been zoom exclusive yeah interesting move from neat so more more i'm sure we'll see more on that from but uh, yeah good to see another product in in the portfolio yeah yeah I've, I've got a briefing coming up with them so i'm hoping to wangle some some kit and get some hands on so we'll we'll find out more as we get that Fantastic. Okay, next up, we said we'd talk about something that people will either love or they will hate. So tell us more about Microsoft Teams auto recording. Yeah, I think I think this will mostly confuse them, to be honest. So for, for the longest time, it's been a really easy conversation about recording. If you want automatic compliance recording, you buy a third party certified product. And if you want what Microsoft called convenience recording, you have to press record in the meeting. Um, what Microsoft have added now, and it kind of makes sense is an option during scheduling the meeting. So the organizer before the meeting starts, pressing a button in the meeting options saying, I want this meeting recorded, automatically start recording. So just to avoid that situation of, you know this is an important meeting, you know you're gonna want it recorded, but someone might forget to press the button. So now that meeting or that series of meetings will just start recording by default. So is there some kind of courtesy message that's going to tell the, the you know the participants on the other side that, that you know this session is going to be recorded? 
Yeah, absolutely. So so very much like Kirsty Recording Works today, you get a purple banner if you're on a Teams client or Teams mobile saying this session is recorded. And if you're PSDN in, it, it, it does an audio prompt saying, hey, this meeting is recorded. Um, so it's it's not replacing compliance recording that the any of the organizers can automatically or not, or they can manually stop the recording they can click and stop it um, it's not every meeting you schedule by default you as an individual scheduling the meeting have to pick it each and every time um, so i think we'll get some confused conversations about can't mm. teams automatically record all my meetings now it doesn't automatically record all meetings on an individual meeting you can elect to have that automatically start record but it doesn't mean compliance it doesn't mean search it doesn't mean every every call is recorded it's just that meeting or series of meetings yeah and sometimes i step into meetings and and someone's already clicked the recording button and i think it would have been nice to have been told that you know you were going to record this call um so maybe there's a feature coming soon uh to an outlook near you that is going to you know maybe tell people that you know this meeting will be recorded you know yeah yeah it's it's an interesting cultural one i Mm. i push for recording a lot i do a lot of pre-sales and customer conversations and i like having it for reference and for the customer to watch back um but but every meeting it's a it's a conversation And, and if anybody's hesitant i always go with let's not because there is that thing about it, it, it can impede an open conversation. So yeah, I'd say yeah, use so. use judiciously for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. It can change the tone of a conversation, certainly. So, um, hmm, okay, well, good one, that one. Uh, next up, we said we talk about the kind of uh, bandwidth control. Now, this is another big one, isn't it? Uh, similar mm-hmm. to the kind of memory usage, but uh, <laughs> tell us more on this one. Yeah, we're going we're going techie techie again a little bit, but this this is really I've been having this conversation with a few different customers at the moment, and it's about controlling how much bandwidth Teams uses, and the reason it's become so pertinent is we're seeing a lot of our big customers go to hybrid working, quote unquote, some proportion of people in the office and some proportion of people at home. Um, but what's super interesting, and because we do reporting on usage, we know this like like factually, the, the video usage is way, way up compared to what it was before. So people are taking that uh, remote working video habit they got during COVID and they're maintaining it in the office, mm-hmm. um, which from with my kind of user adoption, love video hat on, that's amazing because we just couldn't get those rates before. Um, but the network team are slightly scared now because they're like, well, we're at 20% back and we're, everybody's using video and smashing the net, the office network because it was never scaled for that. Um, so obviously, I say get more bandwidth. This is how people want to work. But there are certain places where bandwidth is prohibitively expensive or you just don't want to. Um, so what this policy allows you to do is dynamically identify sites where you want to limit the bandwidth Teams uses. Uh, and there's two modes. You can either just limit the amount of bandwidth per client, so you can reduce their experience slightly. Um, they won't get as good video or as wideband audio, um, or you can straight disable video for that site as well. So they turn up to that site because Teams knows they're on that subnet, they don't get video. Um, but as soon as they return to any other site or home, they're back to their full experience. Fantastic. That's really interesting. And last but not least, we said we'd talk about... Uh, uh is it device state alerting in in the admin center yeah yeah so this is microsoft uh team streams again so it's, this was promised for quite a while uh, and what it is it's some very kind of basic rules around if your microsoft teams room has an issue so something's unplugged or it's gone offline then natively teams will send you an alert uh, so it goes to a teams channel and you can configure this included in your licensing in teams admin center um, there's a, there's two options with Teams Rooms. You can have the standard service or you can have a premium service. And the premium service comes with a premium portal with proactive monitoring and alerting and stuff. So it's interesting to see Microsoft walk the line with what they put in the box and what they want to upsell you on. Um, but this is a good feature that's now in the box. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, Great stuff. Well, that's today's news update uh, just about done. But uh, I think we're going to see more and more on that Windows 11 update uh, over the next few months. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, definitely. I think the the interesting thing there is less Windows 11 and more that integration and how the market receives it. Um, and, and you can see Microsoft are not backing down on pushing Teams for consumer. Like I think this is the 
the, the kind of more formal death knell of Skype. It used to be Windows shipped with a Skype experience for consumer. Now Windows is shipping with a Teams experience for consumer. Um, so we'll see how Microsoft get on with trying to get Teams into the hands of more consumer users. And then how that technology advancement in the client gets over to enterprise because i know enterprise are desperate for a, a more lean teams client yeah you, you're absolutely right about the skype piece as well aren't you because you know where's where's skype going what's the future of skype i mean this kind of buries skype a little bit doesn't it by baking the consumer teams edition into uh Windows. it does it, beg, it begs the question about that a very very big investment for brand and tech now obviously a lot of the tech has been reused and the people have been reused and a lot of the team's code technology comes from that acquisition but as a brand um yeah it's, it's, all, it's all but gone really which is interesting yeah absolutely really interesting and and also one thing is is kind of that teams is not just limited to a mobile device or a, you know a conventional laptop screen is it? it it can be baked into operating systems it could even be baked into uh, maybe a CRM like Dynamics later on as well, I imagine. So it's it's kind of where are they going? Where is Microsoft going to put Teams in the future? Is is the question? Yeah, definitely. I think somebody tweeted. It might have been Sean Harry. Um, like if with the Lean Teams client, do we start seeing what they did with Skype and with Zoom that they put it on consumer devices? Because you've got consumer Teams now, but you can't do a Teams call on, say, an Amazon Alexa, but you can do a Skype call. Yeah. Um, and I know Zoom has been pushing, and that's an interesting tension for Microsoft as well because they want to hold this bar of like really legit high-end devices from certified vendors who really do it properly and mm-hmm. they can be kicked out of the program if they're not legit. But then you've got the consumer side of the the, 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 the coin where actually people want it on their, on their Samsung TV or on their Alexa or on their Google Home or whatever. Um, and we've seen WebEx do that as well. So yeah. I'm really curious as to when, if and when Microsoft say, actually, you can have a Teams consumer experience on those consumer devices. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting where it could go. I mean, I, I'm thinking Teams in HoloLens, you know, v, v, you know the mixed reality uh, headset. I'm thinking, could I have Teams on my watch? Uh, could I have teams in my car you know we've seen we've, it, these things have been around for a while but uh, it'd be interesting to see where we go but I'm sure that that, that can wait for another episode but for now Tom uh, it's been great talking to you again thanks very much for joining me great yeah thanks Rob yeah good update and yeah we'll see everybody uh, next month for the next update absolutely and that's it from us if you've enjoyed today's session please subscribe to UC Today News and give this video a quick share on social it's always appreciated And if you're a Microsoft Teams fan and want to be part of the conversation, you can join us, Tom and me on LinkedIn, Twitter and our social links are in the description. So I'm Rob Scott from UC Today. We'll be back again next month. Thanks for watching.